I'm Ian Thomas with Front Office Sports. I'm joined here today by Kathy Engelbert, WNBA Commissioner. Uh, Kathy, thank you for joining me thank today. Thank you, Ian. It's great to be here. Um, still a new role for you. Tell me a little bit about what brought you to the league. What, what, what excited you about this opportunity and, and how did your sort of unique career slash life path Bring it to women's basketball. Yeah, Ian, great question. I think part of it was I grew up in a basketball family. My father was actually drafted by the Detroit Pistons back in the 50s and had five brothers who played basketball, my sisters as well. So kind of grew up loving basketball uh, and then went into the business and played basketball at Lehigh University under now Hall of Fame coach Muffet McGraw, who now has coached Notre Dame to obviously great success. So, you know, kind of have basketball in the DNA. And um, quite frankly, as I was thinking about after over three decades with Deloitte, I was thinking about what did I want to do next? And I wanted to do something, you know, different with a women's leadership platform and something I had a passion for. So this really met that. And I think the league was looking for a female business leader with a passion for basketball. So it was a really good fit. And uh, here I am. You joined at a great moment with the, with the rebrand, with this new deal with CBS, and and all the excitement that's kind of going around women's sports and, and the movement there. I mean, how do you sort of define this moment for the WNBA? Is this is a real inflection period? Do you think? Yeah, I think there's no doubt. If you look at women's leadership and you look at what sports can do for women and girls and their confidence, that this is such a moment in time for all of women's leadership, and I think. Women Sports is a great feeder into the leadership ranks, at least in corporate America where I was, where a lot of the women leaders had played sports at least through the high school level, if not college. And obviously, these women playing in the WNBA, college graduates, they're smart, they have social voices, they are community-oriented, millennials, digital natives. And, and so it is a moment where I think the WNBA players and the league itself can really step up and really take a leadership role around not just women's sports, but sports and actually the conversation socially as well. Is there, you know, I know it's early days for you still, uh, but when, when you think about stepping into this role and, and helping the league evolve further, are there, are there certain focuses that, that you have in terms of bringing new folks in or, or pointing the leagues in certain directions? Maybe you can take me a little through what you think your strategy is going for. Yeah, so it is early, and I think over the past few months, obviously the league's been working hard with the owners and the whole, I'll look, what I'll call WNBA eco ecosystem with the players, the owners, and I think there's three things I'd like to focus on. You know, one is obviously we're in contract negotiations under the collective bargaining agreement, so there's uh, some uh, moments there to make sure that I get engaged and involved in. But really it's around player experience, fan experience, and really kind of the financials of the teams and the leagues and making sure that we're driving them to the next level and you mentioned inflection point so all of that's coming together I think at a good time where we can actually set the league on a path forward to um, prosperity as well as um, again raising the brand and the brand relaunch as you said and the refresh as well as these women the product on the court has never been better and I think the women's game really has there's an appetite for it we got to expand the fan base We've got to drive corporate sponsorships and we've got to drive, again, uh, the economics in the player and fan experience as well. So a lot, lot to do, but all around those areas. Fair enough. Like I said before, I mean, we're in the moment right now of, of Women's World Cup is ongoing and there's so much elevation of not only women's sports, but or I should say not only just women's soccer, but women's sports sort of period. And it seems like a lot of people are, are if they don't know a lot about women's sports, are willing to make an investment either in time, money or attention. Hey, what do you think some of the forces are going out in the world right now that are drawing more eyeballs to women's sports more broadly regardless of what which sport that is? Well, I think first it's the social conversation around equity and parity and sure. things like that. And, and I think women really deserve that attention. And as the game has gotten stronger and these women have become more athletic and they're you know, they're ready to step into these leadership roles within a team environment and then obviously in whatever they choose to do after. And their work in the community, very community minded. You see a lot of the players in the WNBA. But I, I think it's also we need to expand the platforms in which we offer the game. Obviously the WNBA is on live streaming on Twitter. I watched a game last night while I was on the road. Uh, and looking at all the different platforms so that the consumers of the game uh, can you know really find especially the digital natives the younger generation that we're looking at today like my children's age So they can consume it in a different way than maybe in the old days, but certainly the TV uh, Contracts are very important getting more fans in the seats very important and, and really driving the next generation of fans into the seats and and to give them the you know fan experience and they're looking for entertainment more broadly than just the sport itself And they mentioned women's leadership before 
uh, you know, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver recently made some comments about getting more women's referees involved in the game and getting women's more, more women's coaches involved in the game. Uh, you know, to hear some, what, what's that like to hear from, I guess, a colleague now in a lot of ways, uh, that they, they want to get that involved in the men's side and obviously having that opportunity, you know, heading the women's game now as well. Yeah, I think that's a very progressive way to think about, um, you know, bringing diversity into the sport, quite frankly. Um, both leagues are extremely diverse and gender diversity may be, you know, because the NBA is a men's game and the WNBA is the women's game, but, you know, having coaches, the whole ecosystem, coaches, owners, um, GMs, uh, you know, there's obviously some women, high profile women who've been announced coming into NBA leadership at the team level. Uh, so all of that, I think, is really good for women and good for sports uh, on both sides. So I don't, you know, I think it's around diversity in the management of yeah. the teams and the league and the whole ecosystem. So you have an opportunity now, I get, being a commissioner of a league, puts you in a position where, like you said before, championing women's leadership is something that, in sports, is something that, you know, will be right at your doorstep, if you will. I mean, are there things that you'd like to see, maybe more beyond the WNBA, but in broader sports, that that you're hoping that maybe you could become a voice and an influence in, in, in the broader sort of sports ecosystem? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, again, because of the time we're in and because I sure. think there's a lot of women and girls and men, by the way, and one of the things I did in my prior job is whenever we put a policy in effect, it was for women and men like family leave or inclusion councils and things like that, women and men, because women have, uh, men have to be part of the conversation too. So, I, you know, no surprise here that I'll hopefully bring that business leadership and that women's uh, leadership platform to the WNBA, hopefully in a bigger way to inspire women and girls and men too to either follow the game, play the game, play it at the highest level, or at least have, have an interest in it. Um, because I do highly believe in, for me, starting sports at a very young age, that gave me the confidence to ultimately become the first woman CEO of one of the major professional services firms here in the US. So, you know, it's kind of my pay it forward um, is to really think about how I can help the league and then help women more broadly and have a broader impact. And quite frankly, that was one of my criteria of what I do next. How can I have a broader impact on women's leadership? The last question I, just, I have for you on this front is, you know, you see com uh, media companies like The Athletic, uh, obviously CBS, making deeper investments, not only to cover w the WNBA, but to cover women's basketball sort of more broadly. I mean, what, what do you think is sort of backing a little bit of that desire to showcase this sport? and, and uh, you, has, from the league seat, do, do, you, do you sort of notice more coverage in that sense? Yeah, this, certainly I think everybody, so as a former CEO of a big company, you know, looking for women's leadership platforms, diversity inclusion platforms. So if you think about every company's trying to find their way as to how they can support women in the workplace, women in the social voice, you know, women more broadly. So I think that's what we're seeing. And I think, you know, the interest is, and we hope there's more corporations that are interested in this platform uh, because that's where, how we need to garner the interest, not only as a talent play within those companies, but also for you know, the enhancement and taking the W to the next step.